So if you want a straightforward and compelling way to map your company or brand strategic position versus the competitive set, the strategy canvas is the right tool for you. What we're gonna take a look at is Tesla versus the luxury car market to see how Tesla was able to stand out from the pack. Hey, I'm Adam, this is Strategy Kiln, where we demystify and simplify business challenges. I'm always giving out free slides, tools, frameworks, things like that over at strategykiln.com, so please check it out. Uh, let's roll. So the Strategy Canvas tool comes to us from this celebrated book, Blue Ocean Strategy. Pretty amazing, you can just stare at this cover and just, and just feel good. It's very soothing. So we'll look at the Strategy Canvas tool in a second, but let's look at some concepts to ground ourselves in, in the thinking of how to use it. So the central theme of Blue Ocean Strategy is that you look for uncontested market space, and you guessed it, you're looking for blue oceans. Not red oceans where everybody's vying for price leadership and kind of butting heads against each other. Blue ocean is where you define what you're competing against. New attributes, new categories to win. That's how Tesla has been successful. That's how companies like Uber have been successful and other names like Apple, right? Some red oceans, when you think about those organizations, you can think about Sears, JCPenney, Brita Water Filter. Remember Brita Water Filter showed up in the 90s. Nobody else had anything like it. I think my mom had one of the first Brita filters around. We were like, hey, this is really cool. You don't need bottled water. And then suddenly everybody else was doing it. So blue oceans can become red oceans. So you have to make sure you keep innovating. You're looking for surprisingly non-customers, okay? People who aren't in your territory now. That's one of the special things that defines blue oceans. You know, surprisingly, the way that blue oceans drive disproportionate customer and business value is by buying for both low cost and differentiation. And this is something that Porter used to say is like you pick one or the other, blue oceans actually vibe for both. Okay, so I have to provide a quick caveat here. This book is deep, okay? There's so much incredible content here. I can't sum it all up just in one quick YouTube video. Uh, Patrick, Bet David, really amazing. Um, entrepreneur who's got the Valuetainment channel. He's a huge advocate of this book. You should definitely uh, pick it up because there are things in here that I can't cover that are true gems of, of what strategy is all about. Also a quick plug, if you're interested in strategic thinking, I do have over at strategykiln.com strategic thinking on a page using an Occam framework, so it's really simplified, something you can kind of take with you. Okay, so let's take a look at some quick data on how powerful Blue Ocean strategy can be. Uh, from a data-driven standpoint. So this really reinforces how blue oceans outperform red, right? With only a marginal 14% of business launches, blue ocean products and services drive 38% of revenue. So that's already quite impressive. But this is absolutely staggering. From just that small 14% base, 61% of profit is driven by blue ocean strategies, products, and launches. So the point, it's really good to have BL. Okay, so how do you construct a blue ocean strategy? Uh, one of the tools that you can use for the strategy canvas to inform it is the four actions framework. So you can see it here. In terms of practical application, you need to identify what you should reduce, eliminate, create, or raise. So Tesla is such a crisp example of blue ocean strategy because you can see they you know, do all these things. They're eliminating advertising, reducing the number uh, and size of dealerships, right? They're blazing a new paradigm all over the place, um, raising the bar on safety, fuel costs, creating the first electric car brand, charging station network, self-driving technology, you know, the list goes on and on. So they've raised a lot, they've created a lot, but they've also reduced and eliminated a lot. Okay, so let's get to it and take a look at the Tesla strategy canvas. Um, there's something so remarkable about Tesla as a company. It's not just a car company, right? It's part tech company. And there's something so Apple-esque about Tesla. The way, you know, like Steve Jobs was part of the brand. Elon Musk is just this larger than life type persona. He's an engineer, he's a scientist. Uh, he owns SpaceX. He's doing all of these breakthrough things, uh, including smoking weed, of course, with Joe Rogan. He's a different kind of person and he has led the way for Tesla to become a different 
you know, vehicle in the space. So what could be stodgier than the car market, right? When was the last time you saw a big splash out there? Saturn showed up, was kind of cool for a minute, died out. Uh, you had Scion, which, you know, made, again, a, a, pr a pretty good foray into the market, but then died out. Fiat tried to show up. The little refrigerator cars, what did they bring to the table? Anyway, I worked at a car dealership in Phoenix for a couple years. This was my first job after getting my philosophy degree. And so I do know a little bit about the car market. Most companies don't do a whole lot. Tesla does so much differently. And that's how the Model 3 was able to vault to the number one selling luxury vehicle of 2018. Okay, so here's the strategy canvas. And keep in mind, I've got that template in Excel over at strategykiln.com so you can download it and create your own um, version of this. Okay, so Tesla versus the luxury car industry. I'll orient you to the slide here. On the bottom, you've got a bunch of different attributes going from kind of the, the standard attributes uh, in the marketplace for luxury vehicles where Tesla, quite frank, frankly, performs rather weakly, um, where Tesla performs parity there in the middle, and then at the end, breakout superiority for Tesla. So take a look at these, economies of scale, right? Tesla started out really small, they actually began with a luxury sports car, this Roadster. Um, they're getting more and more economies of scale over time. Uh, I think they just opened up the first fully owned uh, factory in China, so that's a huge feat. They're starting to close the gap in economies of scale, uh, but that's pretty fresh. Brand status, they do have a strong brand, mainly built by Elon Musk and all the excitement surrounding the brand and how different it is. Uh, but just keep in mind the heritage and you know the, the status built by your Audis, Mercedes, BMWs. The brands in this space are truly powerhouses. Um, build quality. This is not a place that Tesla, quite frankly, excels. Like they've got some cool amenities like a whoopee cushion sound effect and some neat stuff in the back where you can have like an executive table. That stuff's all great but it doesn't necessarily beat out what you can get from the best Mercedes, or Audi, BMW, so on and so forth. Uh, in the interior, uh, from the research that, that I've conducted, mainly like Car and Driver, US News, you know, sources like that, build quality and interior quality for Lexus is actually a few notches below. So what you find is that Tesla does not want to be the best at everything. This is an area where they actually reduced uh, the way that they entered the market so that they could compete more strongly in other areas. Looking at parity, you know, quietness, smooth rides, safety. Tesla is actually much safer than a lot of the uh, other luxury manufacturers, but it's not something that they truly compete on in a big, big way. Um, exclusivity, most of these brands are exclusive, although, you know, Tesla is a little bit harder to get. Uh, design, you know, it's a nice looking car, but there's a lot of other good looking cars and reliability. So they're about parity there. So this is where things get interesting, right? This is the blue ocean component where the red line and the white line diverge, break out superiority. So fuel costs. Tesla's the only company out there today where it's just a full suite of electric um, cars. Environmental footprint, very good for the environment. Maintenance and repairs. You can have your Tesla repaired just by having someone sync up remotely to your vehicle, up upgrading the software. Uh, charging station network, right? Nobody has anything quite like this. I think there's something around 14, 15,000 charging stations all across the United States. Nobody else has a charging station network like that. Uh, Self-driving vehicles. Tesla is obviously the forerunner here as well. So this chunk in the green box represents the delta between the whole rest of the industry and Tesla. And this is what we really call blue ocean strategy. You can see the beauty and the elegance and the simplicity of the strategy canvas just spells it out so, so simply there. So if you're presenting this to um, people, you can just show like, this is the way we're gonna break away from the competition and outcompete to get those profits and returns like what we had talked about earlier in the video. But how long will the ocean stay blue for Tesla? So looking at our canvas again here, you know, I modified and added this orange line where Tesla currently operates in a blue ocean. But in say 2025, when the industry catches up, Tesla will begin to be in red ocean territory. So you can get that Elon Musk knows this will happen. Hence his expansion into solar 
you know, energy under the Tesla brand. So if you go to Tesla.com, you'll see the solar panel uh, component. I think they bought Solar City. That's now under the Tesla brand. Obviously, I'm just trying to do a little crystal ball work here, but in just a few years, you know, fuel cost, maintenance and repairs, technology, the personalization, all of that, you know, Mercedes, Audis, they're really going to be you know, biting at the heels of Tesla. Audi's e-tron is already a really great vehicle, so it'll be incredibly interesting to see how uh, new territories are created on all fronts, because once you innovate and disrupt to this level that Tesla has, the competitive set out there, some of them will stay stodgy. Uh, they won't get the wake up call, but others will say, hey, we need to reinvent ourselves as well. And you're gonna start to see a lot of new blue oceans, new categories, new ways to deliver value uh, to the customer. And so that's gonna be an exciting thing to look forward to. So I'd like to end these videos with an enduring understanding. So if you can remember anything, remember that you should go out there in the name of Blue Ocean Strategy and continuously explore uncharted, uncontested market space to deliver greater customer and business value. Go get some stuff over at strategykiln.com. There's a lot of content. Like I said, this book has so much in it. I've got a lot of content that I drew from the book and put into some slides um, where you can get the strategy canvas, that Excel document to build your own strategy canvas over at strategykiln.com. I really do hope you check it out and subscribe to my channel. Uh, thanks and see you soon.